Just a bit of frost this morning. That's the potato bed. The grass is all frozen as well. You can see what we've done with the plum tree. Not quite crunching under your feet, but there is a definite uh, soft squelch. No, not squelch, but definitely a nice soft noise coming from you. Um, seems to have only affected the stuff on the ground. Anyway, um, I'll keep going. Okay, it's Sunday the 27th and we have had, of oh, August, and we have had some rain. Uh, as you can tell by the swishing noise, and also the actual water. We've got standing water um, all along through here. So this area is absolutely soaked. We're going to have to work out something about this. I think there's a drainage project coming up. I've been discussing with John about the best way of doing it. Let's have a quick walk through and I'll show you the new stuff we've done. So I've got a couple of Wombox growing in here and a couple of Silver Beet. This is basically just tidying it over till the tomatoes are ready. I have, if you can see down there, that's all the tomatoes. I've gone through each variations. So they just got repotted today from the seedling trays. Passion fruit's doing all right. Fenugreek from the, we're trying to do a green manure there. It's not really working. Um, these are purple sprouting something. Can't remember. Um, some kind of brassica. Uh, these are the, um, these are the Brussels sprouts, purple Brussels sprouts. The broccoli is actually the sprouting broccoli. So this broccoli, is, you can pick the head and it will grow new heads. Uh, so that's what's special about it. It's a green Italian sprouting. It's doing quite well. Um, some of the cabbage, um, Brussels sprouts are doing well as well. Um, the problem we're having with my cabbages is they are going to seed. So I'm going to cut them and we're going to go see what we can get out of them. Uh, if we can actually make some kimchi this year or not. If not, we'll buy some from the store and have a crack at it. Kale, doing really well. So about to, we're almost able to start eating that. Um, these cabbages are now starting to go to seed. We've eaten most of the cauliflower with the exception of that head. That head is getting eaten tomorrow. And they've got another white head one over there. You can just see it poking through. Um, the purple cabbages for kraut. Whoop, let me just get that. Oh no, what's going on? There we go. The purple cabbages for kraut are starting to head up nicely. So, And these little, uh, we've got some carrots growing along here and the swedes. They'll probably need thinning soon, so we'll be able to eat the, the stems of those. They're quite nice. The garlic. So this borage here, this flower that we planted, I didn't realise it got to a, basically a one metre hemisphere in size. So it's been shading out these garlic. So you can see they've not done as well compared to the ones right next to them. So the, some of the garlic's doing amazing, some of it's doing okay. I think this one that's doing really well is because it's an early variety. One of the projects we did, we finished, just finished it a couple minutes ago. Okay, so this is where the asparagus and probably the rhubarb will live. So this is gonna be for perennials. So uh, it's a double height. It's the same size as these, just, just double height. I'm actually thinking eventually I will make them every single bed. This is in the next three years. I will make every single bed three high because it makes them so much easier, no more bending. But we're just throwing crap in there to get fill at the moment. Uh, fig, nothing special as far as what's going on. The buds are starting to green up. Um, so you can kind of see what's going on there. Um, you know, the little leaf buds are now all starting to form. Uh, it's not liking zooming in on there. But you can see they're starting to get ready to go. Mm, the graft. You know, maybe, I don't know. I'd like this one to grow, because this came from my parents' tree. But, you know, it got a little bit of frost burn at the tips. and It's still green, which is, I guess, a good sign. But, you know, again, we'll see. Um, these are, again, the, frost, the two trees that the frost killed. Um, right, the plum. So, I don't know if you guys remember, but the plum was massive. It's now not massive. So you can see that I've taken all of these central branches here out so it was huge before and it's it's blooming so you can see all of the flowers just now starting to form they're starting to look really lovely so it's alive you know we've got to have gonna have plums by the look of it unless it you know absolutely goes mad but you can see that I took some fairly substantial pork, pork uh, pieces out so we'll see how they go hoping for some new growth so I can actually train this back into a usable shape because that was the problem with it, it was never a usable shape. Um, tamarillo, 
has survived the frost. It's got little buds forming off the, the hips here. Uh, if you can see there, it's kind of hard to see. The phone camera's not the best, but there are little buds forming. Um, you've seen that the poplar and the pine came down. The artichokes, I put down some organic-ish snail bait. They're basically an iron-based one, so they're a lot less rough. They're relatively pet-proof. And uh, the artichokes seem to be doing better because of it. The ones that have mulch compared to the ones that don't. Mulched ones? Unmulched ones. So... Read into that what you may. I've never seen peach blossoms before, but they're, God, they're pretty. You know, they're just really pretty little pink flowers for the peach blossoms. So it's going to grow this year. We'll see how we go. It's already started growing. The orange has started to get a couple little growth points along there. Again, it's struggling to zoom in on everything properly. There we go. Little growth points there. Um, so it might get some growth this year. One of the other oranges as well. I'm not seeing the growth points on this guy. Uh, you know what? No, there are in, like deep in there. Um, you know what? There's absolutely no luck here. There we go. Deep in there, there's some growth points. So we'll see. Um, the mandarin got a bit of leaf curl going on, so not sure. Bit of research, I think, to get this one up and running. It's still one throwing okay, but again, not amazing. Geez, I'm really struggling to focus in this low light. Um, the lime got hit by some gall wasp, so it got a big trim. There's still actually a couple of galls that I probably need to remove. There's one in there. Basically, it, if there's a gall on it, you cut it out. It doesn't matter how much the tree you lose, it's just better that way. Um, the fajoa's doing pretty well. We'll get another good run of growth out of it. And then one of the, the potatoes. I have actually pulled back from one of the potatoes. I am starting to see long tendrilous uh, growth starting to come up so I reckon in the next three weeks we will have the, the the shoots from the potatoes coming up I haven't seen anything breach the mulch yet but we'll no wait what's that that there is a potato sprout I hadn't actually seen that this isn't a setup there you go so the potatoes are growing Really happy with that. Next project was this one. It's still a bit of a mess. We've just had so much rain it's difficult to look after. Um, so we've put in concrete in these two, uh, Lauren calls them obelisks. They're 100 by 100 mil, about 3.6 tall, about 900 of them are set into the ground and concreted in. They're espalier wires for these two cherry trees. And we've also got a, um, uh, a worm, uh, worm tube basically, so you can put waste into it and the worms We'll eat it. But the problem is, we've got serious drainage issues. That is a 600 mil deep hole, and it is almost to the surface full of water. So, we have a fairly substantial drainage project coming up. Um, I'm nearly through chopping up all the wood from the plum and the poplar and the pine. Um, nearly. Um, but I'm doing it by hand because I, you know, because I'm an idiot. But anyway. Um, and. Yeah, so we've still got to extend the mulch out to there. I've got a couple other trees I'd like to put in. That, like, I'm looking for a really nice nectarine tree, a uh, gold flesh one. I'm not a huge fan of the white fleshed ones, but we'll see what I can find. I'll probably replace these two guys. Um, and I'll replace these two passion fruits in the next week or two, I think. And I'll put another one in behind here. Um, and probably some kiwis as well. I'm gonna give kiwi fruit a go, see how they go. Um, apart from that, We've had some good growth in the front garden, but I might save that for another time. Um, all the bulbs are starting to pop up, but they're not, you know, only the, daff the daffodils flowered first, so haven't had anything since then. Um, yeah, the tomatoes are the big one. Um, so I planted three trays with two dozen cells each, and I probably got about a 90% success rate, maybe 80% success rate. So, I don't know, there's 12 there, 12 there, 12 there, 10 there. 12 there, 8 there, so 12, uh, it's, it's, you know, not, maybe 60, 60 plants, something along those lines. Um, yeah, so next step is uh, to plant some more borage plants, and they'll go in between the trees for this season. I've already started planting a couple of the spare wildflower plants, so we'll, um, next germination project will be some flowers. Inside already we've got onions, shallots, and eggplants. 
uh, uncapsicums um, ready to plant out. So yeah, we'll uh, keep on keeping on with that, but I'll uh, keep you guys updated. All right, bye.